Hello, Peter O'Doherty. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Look, welcome. Um, and your exhibition, uh, which is The Distance Between Us, is on at King Street Gallery on William um, in Sydney. <sighs> Surely you couldn't possibly have known when you decided on that title for an exhibition, presumably quite some time ago, just how much the distance between us is going to mean at this time. I was making use of the word irony, I think, without even having any clue what was coming. But yeah, a lot of people have been saying, oh, how pretty interview. And, uh, so yes, I might be able to get a job as a clairvoyant because there's not many jobs as artists left now that we've got the coronavirus uh, taking over. Yeah, but yeah, it was very unfortunate timing with, well, it looked for everyone. I don't feel at, at all um, different for every, everybody I talk to is basically caught up in this. It's like a giant wave that's just keeps on coming towards us as the tide rises and um, this thing has just overtaken everything. So it was just as my show was about to start, I had a meeting with the, with the guys at King Street and we decided that, well, they, they thought, and I thought too, that it was probably best to pull the opening at the time. There was a lot of, every day was the new, you know, news coming through that it was getting worse and worse and things were getting closed down and we people were thinking about social distancing a lot and which had been you know this thing happened probably a month or two ago everything felt virtually normal not really we were all still talking about it five six weeks ago but uh just the week before my show that every day was more is sort of startling news and we so we decided to not have an opening can't really have people um in the same room together so the distance between us certainly did have some resonance and it's been resonating more and more. So it's like dropping a stone into a pool. I'm just watching the, the ripple effect. Mm. Um, so coming toward the last week or so now of the show, so it's very good of you to, to you know, to have some interest and, and, and have a chat with me. Well, look, it's a pleasure. I mean, and it is, of course, a great shame that, uh, that this is the new normal. But perhaps mm -hmm. it also provides opportunities. And here we are talking in our respective homes, talking to each other, um, you know, on our phones or our, our laptops. Uh, and I guess the idea is that people can listen to this conversation, but at the same time, perhaps be on the gallery website, looking at the exhibition uh, and looking at the works so that while you uh, and I have a discussion yeah. about them, people can actually yeah. look at what it is that, that, uh, that we're talking about. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. One of the things we should uh, start with right at the beginning of the of the exhibition is the the buildings uh, and and the complex um, abstract grids that you have created with uh, many for many years now, but uh, with works from mm. uh, some of the pieces in the exhibitions. Um, there are some some very large ones uh, overlooking Garden Island or white balconies. They're positively monumental. What's the attraction of those abstract construction grids for you? They're probably easier than doing landscapes and faces because uh, they don't have too many curves for a start, which makes it, makes it a little bit simpler. So it is often actually in some ways, I'm, I sound like I'm being facetious, but there is a sort of a simplicity and a sort of elemental geometry, a rigid geometry to buildings, which for some reason it's just, it's just caught my my interest all the way through. My father was a carpenter, so I did see houses being built from the ground up and helped, you know, like do some of the basic labouring on, on some of those houses when I was a kid and, you know, teenager. So um, I've always had the interest in it, you know, and I probably almost could have been an architect when I was in, in early high school and I, I was still, still actually, you know, being a diligent student for the first couple of years. And then I got sort of uh, ensnared into a very bad vices uh, which ended up me becoming a musician. So, uh, um, you know, I've taken a few, it's been a roundabout way of getting back to being, a, I mean, I was always an artist, always, well, not an artist, but I was always drawing and, and loved art as a kid. So I didn't go to art school, didn't, haven't had any formal training, but after playing music for you know, quite a few years with mentors, anything, and touring a lot uh, and being at a band with other uh, arts, they were all art students apart from myself. So there was that milieu and atmosphere around me of, and we always had a common interest in art. So when we toured, we would always make sure we'd go to art museums everywhere we went. So that was pretty good. I got to see lots of great things, especially when we were traveling overseas and, and all around Australia and New Zealand and 
Um, the, and then when I got married, uh, my wife Susan and myself both just started painting together. It was just something we could do at home, and uh, we both had a really basic elemental interest in that. And she was untrained as well, so we just we never stopped. Once we got some paints and some paper, and then advanced into canvases, it never stopped. And I took my my sort of my knowledge about house building, I suppose, into the painting. So the houses have have kind of um, been a central part of what I love to do. For some reason, I still, I mean, I still drive around the, you know, the suburbs where I live and I see houses all the time that, I, that I'm commonly, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a lot of photographs as I, every day I go out, I'm taking photographs, collecting information, collecting uh, source material for, for new painting. So it's an endless thing. And in a, in a way it's good because it's, it just means I'm just, wrestling with the challenges of what painting is, 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 is you know, colour and form and composition. It seems like very sort of simple, elemental collection of things that make up a painting. And I'm still interested in how that is, almost like through a childlike eye. So maybe looking at buildings and the, and the, the built world, the urban constructed world, is part of that childlike view of you know just being amazed at what humans can do. So you've been you know, you've been painting. very committed though for quite a number of years now to uh, the painting of often some very humble types of uh, of houses and dwellings, as well as these larger, as we said, almost abstracted, quite uh, modern monumental pieces. Um, things like the the little tiny work uh, called front door uh, in the exhibition and perhaps if people are looking they can have a look at that uh, that image on the website now uh, that's a tiny piece 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters and yet there is a, a compositional strength in that that you responded to in some way yeah well i i, I sort of like playing with the scale of the actual format so like painting small as is good because it means you can do something quickly and often in one or two sittings whereas the bigger you get the longer it takes and the more labor goes into it and so sometimes the small ones have that loose uh, early rendition the, the first or second draft which you capture uh, something in that and if you're doing a bigger painting it's harder for me to, to ever get that first or second draft to be the one that comes anywhere close to what the finished painting ends up as so the bigger they get the, the just the more more of a, it's, it's a bit like building a house or you know you say you'd spend can spend weeks on them uh, there's a, a a larger work balgala bungalow uh which um clearly you still have that sense of affection in the way in which you portray it um so give us a sense when you see a house uh, and this presumably is one that you must have seen and and decided to mm. paint when you do when you do see a house what draws you to decide that okay that is the one that i will make into a work um, often something to do with probably the time of the day the light um and then the angles and the general composition and uh, look at a lot of the time i'm traveling the great thing about having a, 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 the iphones that we all carry is that they've got good cameras so you can take photographs really quickly so i can i don't have to sit and do a drawing you know in front of the house which is often better not to do that anyway because otherwise people call the police so i'd rather not have you know make trouble sometimes people look very suspiciously at me as i'm photographing their houses so and a bit nervous and so i you know i, I do it quickly and then move on but but i, I usually see something often and then i just distill something out of the photograph down to the most basic thing and and remove as a lot of it's about deleting so taking out extraneous uh, you know things like telephone uh, telegraph wires or telephone poles or or too many shrubs in the garden I like to have, sort of simplify it and some people do those beautiful neat gardens where you can't believe that they've not grown anything there it's just a bit of lawn very cleanly cut right up to the edge of the house and it's, so those sort of houses are always like it's almost like a painting you know before you even start so sometimes it's easy and sometimes I have to sort of work a bit harder to, to draw something out. Going back to uh, the, the title of the exhibition overall the distance between us, one of the things that's very apparent as we have a look at the houses, um, the larger buildings, in fact, all of the paintings, there are no people. Why not? No. Well, people are annoying. 
Richard. <laughs> not you, not you. <laughs> I'm annoying. I know that, but you only go and talk to my wife Susan and she'll say, people are annoying. <laughs> she spends a lot of time, we spend a lot of time together in the, in the house, at, we've got a studio house or house studio. It's kind of all turned into, every room really is part of the, the, the studio, so. Um, but, but there is a, there is a certain sort of starkness, a so a, what yeah, feels like a deliberate a of, starkness um, that you've yeah. chosen. A lot of people paint paint people, you know. So in a way, I like to sort of um, differentiate myself by not doing that. I, I have done in the past. I, when I first earlier, you know, in earlier years, I was painting, putting people into the paintings, and then they become more to me. It's more, uh, it's more pictorial. It's more um, uh, yeah, about, you know, recording a, uh, a, a um, almost like a family photograph or something. And, I, and I'm, so I'm taking it away from that. I'm trying to make it something that's completely, almost an abstract thing in, in, in its own right. So if you take the people out and take a lot of the other extraneous elements out, somehow turns it into something else anyway. So, um, you know, and again, if you, to do people in there, it just, makes it a bit more narrative based or something and I don't want but there if, to be any narrative I want it to have its own sense of atmosphere but if there were people in there perhaps you wouldn't be inviting people so much to look really closely at the at the objects these these houses these buildings no. in some of the other paintings which we'll talk about in a moment you know domestic utensils uh, areas inside a, a house or a building you seem yeah. to be inviting people to look really carefully at these objects and these surfaces. Well, I think when you when you do see the, the the streets that you live on, and then you drive around the suburbs of the city that you live in or the town you live in, uh, unless it's completely rural. But you know, for me, I've always lived in the suburbs of the of the city, and there are nothing but buildings and houses and dwellings and you know they're occupied and there's people in there, there's families in there, there's, uh, you know, and, and you see people, but a lot of the time you don't. And, the, and most of the time they're actually fairly faceless facades and you know that there's all this life inside. And I think that is quite, quite interesting, pretty intriguing that, that there's all this anonymous unseen life going on inside those houses. So the windows are a little bit like little eyes that you can see into. And if you, in a, if you go out at night and walk the streets, uh, they they turn into something you can actually look into where the lights are on you can see inside the houses and the outside the dark so they reverse themselves so I have done a few nighttime paintings but still resisted the actual <laughs> occupants so, you know, maybe the odd silhouette or something but but you know uh, it's just interesting it's interesting how we live you know as humans you know like we're like this nest of nest of humans like we're almost like a plague species now I mean look at the, the situation now with the coronavirus and climate change and we you know we're really in a kind of pivotal dramatic time in human existence i think and the, and the, and the, the planet's kind of probably um rebelling a bit and as it should but i'm not sure how i've got onto that from from where i was talking about looking <laughs> well the maybe can i may i, may I take you this. may i take you somewhere else with that which is the the poignancy uh, particularly at these times now of uh, the paintings that you've made at airports. Uh, I think there's one uh, of a, an aircraft at Darwin Airport. There's another one taxiing at Beijing Airport. Um, there's yeah. a, a, a Jetstar uh, um, aircraft that you can tell by the insignia. Th these, these are pretty yeah. poignant images now. Well, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Again, that's, that's very prescient, but you know, all that air travel seems to just die now. We, when we see an aircraft in the in the sky, we're all amazed. It's like, whoa, look at that! It's incredible. So it's just cha everything's changed from last year to now. And I and I've always had an interest again in things like aircraft because I still can't quite believe that you know humans are, are smart enough to to build those things and make them fly. And then we all go you know climb inside them and travel around in them. It's it's pretty incredible. So. A lot of it, I think, is my sense of wonderment. Is it's like a child's eye. I mean, used to, when I was a kid, I used to love drawing space rockets and you know make up things. And you know, I loved the Thunderbirds and all those kind of shows with aircraft and and um, you know science fiction films. And to me, it's like we're we're living in the future. We are in the future now. You know, we have been for quite a long time in this modern world that we live in. Um, who knows how long it's going to last for? And that's 
current kind of form, who knows, but but I, maybe painting them as something I'm painting, I'm, I'm recording something that may not always be around that much. Mm. Something that has been around for a while uh, has been a particularly identifying painting style that you've had uh, using the paint that you do with a, a certain kind of blur, a certain sort of haze over the object so that one is not sure exactly where the hard edge of the object is or even whether a hard edge exists. How did you develop that and, and why has that become such an important signature for you? Well, um, looking at you on this machine that we're looking at each other on now, I can't see any edges to you, Richard. You're just one big blurry, fuzzy person <laughs> with a voice coming out of the blur. So I look at me, I can, I can joke about my eyesight, you know, sort of, you know, deteriorating as we all have, you know, I, I, I don't always not go without my glasses, but I am now. Um, oh, it, it's just a stylistic thing that, that developed and, you know, you, you try to find your own signature, I think, when you're doing, making art or saying, being a musician and I, I write songs, I think it's the same, very much the same thing, just looking for something that feels true to you, you know, and I think something, the soft thing just sort of developed. Like, and I was never really a conscious thing. It was just, oh, that felt like suddenly it was there. You know, early on I was painting very hard edged, um, sharp, delineated, you know, objects, but just somehow the, the, the blurring, it's a bit like when you see a black and white photograph, uh, you know, from the 1930s or 40s or even from now, but there's a, it takes it into, somehow another realm and it takes it away from the narrative to the more literal version of what you're looking at. So I guess the edges blurring just means everything kind of morphs into itself, which is part of the physics of, of reality. Mm. Let's that, sounds, finish. that sounds quite smart, doesn't it? Oh, no, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was our deep moment. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, um, let's finish up with, uh, let's finish up with some sinks uh, because you've painted some, uh, superb sinks for this exhibition. Um, again, not the the choice that one would necessarily expect if one just looked at very large buildings and large building facades, but with these no. very intimate pictures, you've taken us into a series of hotel sinks. How mm. did you decide on the sinks that you were choosing? Well, I've done a few sinks over the over the years and um, I've done the kitchen sink a few times, you know, the kitchen sink painting, which is a school of painting, but not that I, again, not wasn't like a conscious thing, but uh, I've done the, you know, just messy sink, my own sink where we, our dishwasher, we've only ever had a dishwasher that lasted about six months and, and uh, that one packed up. And so we're back to always having a sink full of dirty dishes, which is, you know, we try and resist, we, 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 we compete for not doing the dishes for two to three days at a time until someone gives in. But uh, that, that can make a good painting. But the empty sink somehow is also, it's got that a little bit like the, the facade of a house. It's just this, this statuesque form, you know, with, with, and the good thing about a sink too is it has um, rounded, rounded, almost, you could say, it's like sensuous sort of edges and, and, and in shapes and forms and shadows pulled in different ways to that than they do on a, on a flat surface of a of a constructed um, uh, building, so yeah, so I just yeah, they're just the good things in the tiling and the, in the light and the shadow within a room. Um, it's all just part of again just assembling things to make a composition, and and I just I like that uh, that simple arrangement of, of a very basic empty sink, which is a quite a beautiful thing, really. <laughs> it is indeed, Peter O'Doherty. Thank you for sharing your exhibition. Oh, thanks, Richard. Thanks for talking to me.